So, um, so now uh, what I'd like to do as we get started again is introduce, introduce you to Mr. Yuki Kurokawa. Uh, he's the chairman of the Japan Resilience Initiative Task Force. Sounds a lot like something Tom might do, right? Uh, except if you look at his bio, he has a lot of interesting corporate and government relationships that he has been involved in in Japan. And, uh, be, uh, and I first met him just this past summer at National Defense University. Uh, they host an annual um, sort of like a conference or demonstration called um, Star Tides, where people are involved in disaster relief uh, or uh, uh, of any kind, actually, including NGOs in this country, to show off their technology and what they do. And I was able to meet him there. And I thought it was very appropriate because of our concerns about the fragility of the electric grid and that the potential impact on nuclear power plants here. Uh, you know, we have a lot of lessons to learn, I guess, from Japan. And as Tom said, they do a lot of things uh, uh, better than we do. Um, and I'm very glad that uh, he was able to come here today. Uh, and also, uh, this, is a, this is a sidebar that shows that many of us really care about Japan. Uh, we think very highly of them, and uh, we welcome them all of the time. But lots of times when we're sitting over here and something happens, uh, if you're not involved in the International Red Cross or these folks at NDU who work with these relief agencies, you sometimes feel helpless uh, to help people after the fact. Uh, your being here today can make a difference because you can do something uh, before the fact. Um, but to show you how helpless you can sometimes feel, uh, when the day Fukushima happened, I hadn't had a watch for some years because I'm using my cell phone all the time. And I said, I'm going to go do something for the country of Japan. Little me, what do I have? Nothing that I can do. So I went and bought a Japanese watch from Seiko. Okay. I assume it's still a Japanese company. It hasn't been bought by China or something. So uh, but that was my attempt to do something, um, but I'm very glad that I was able to, to meet Yuki and that he was uh, able to come here, uh, take a few minutes to discuss some of his involvement, and I'm sure he'll be interested in some of your questions about you know, how they do things there versus what we do and the issues involved with uh, making awareness happen and trying to, to be responsive in some way. So at this time, um, I'd like to invite Mr. Yuki Karakawa to come forward and uh, pre present us with his or, uh, background and his presentation. Thank you, Yuki. Chuck, thank you very much for a nice introduction. Uh, I'm honored to speak in this uh, uh, Dipon, Council, uh, Dipon Summit. And uh, here, uh, most of people are experts for EM, EMP, right? So I don't touch about uh, neutron and the magnetic field interfere and also uh, phased EMP storm system uh, with a grid or allied uh, grid uh, nuclear plant. Uh, I don't touch these issues. Uh, I want more touch about uh, politics, what, else, what was happened and why Japan is still doing. And now uh, in Japan, disaster still continue. You see the, today we had a big earthquake in Japan and uh, always plant engineer is in a shelter. So all uh, work is stopped always, or every day work is stopped. And uh, last year, uh, March 11th, uh, you remember the magnitude nine earthquake? This, this is not a direct hit, but uh, uh, most of the damage was caused by tsunami. And uh, this was a cross state uh, disaster. So we have several governors. So governor, uh, if we have uh, one governor like a Kobe earthquake, it's very simple. We had uh, several. So governor, uh, every governor fight each other with prime minister. This is another political problem. And uh, another one is uh, uh, we see the tsunami and uh, those just a simple disaster. Maybe we finish uh, in uh, or after 30 years, but the Fukushima uh, radiation things are different. It's a 150 years project. And this is a, a map last time we used, and this is by USID, USAID, and the uh, US military responded uh, very well. Uh, green, green flag as a US military base, and the uh, Japanese military did not have much uh, capability. Then we had a Kizuna project, 
and earthquake itself, we did not uh, get uh, much uh, direct impact, uh, but the tsunami was bigger. And this is uh, some video. So this is uh, close to a Sendai airport. So most of damage is not by earthquake, this was by uh, uh, tsunami. And by the way, in uh, Fukushima plant, uh, that big damage is not by uh, tsunami, it's by earthquake. Because the uh, fault lane is just under the plant. And the tsunami evacuation, we have a policy and so on, but uh, it did not work much. And this is a Fukushima case. You can see a uh, first explosion is a bottom picture, and it's just uh, explored or yeah, explored like a horizontally. And the second explore is a, uh, the picture in the middle is a more horizontal and a black cloud, like a weapon, a nuclear weapon. And big issue for nuclear plant is a, one of the headache of an electric company is that this Fukushima plant is not insured. So they did not insure the how say, insurance for nuclear like a damage, how say, accident. This was just uh, happen. And the uh, tsunami just uh, hit the power generator and they should have a safety uh, system. It was designed originally, but uh, that safety shutdown system was cut when they constructed 40 years ago. Maybe it, it's cost high then. And the uh, information is not uh, delivered to the citizen well, so Everybody was outside and uh, get the sunshine, and most of our children are dosed because of uh, radiation and also nuclide fry. And this is a simulation by meteorological uh, agency or council. This is a cesium, uh, where cesium flew. This yellow is a cesium. So it flew about uh, uh, 1,000 kilometers and 300 kilometers should be evacuated, but we did not, Japan did not uh, evacuate. And the uh, left side, this map is a heavily damaged area. It's all cesium and uh, strontium and plutonium and iodide. And some area we can find a very strange material like uh, europium and so on. Now our self-defense force is collecting all materials and also spent fuel flew because of a second explosion is more like a bomb and explode and it's flew like 30 kilometers. So government or self-defense is now collecting all uh, spent fuel pellets in a city. And uh, you, you already have a, this is just a summary or you already have a knowledge and in uh, radiation uh, most of Japanese people misunderstood uh, radiation and the nuclide is different. And the nuclide particle will come from a power plant damage and uh, also uh, like a uranium mines. And the radiation will come from an X-ray and a nuclear bomb. A nuclear bomb will emit mostly X-ray or uh, heat. So most of our damage in Hiroshima was a heat. Uh, heat uh, killed uh, most of people, not by radiation. And we have a type, uh, how say, major, how say, nuclide is uh, iodide and cesium and strontium and plutonium. Uh, so it's emitted from a nuclear power plant. And still, uh, how say, the, in Chernobyl, uh, the plant was sealed it in two weeks, but in Japan it's still open. So every summer or when uh, temperature became high or like a summer, uh, always uh, nuclide will fry and uh, it's liquidized. So cloud is uh, radiated. So in, still in, even in Tokyo, uh, when we get the uh, rain, we should be in a building like for two hours because uh, cloud will uh, how say nuclide is in a cloud, then that uh, nuclide will come to the ground. So ground uh, radiation level always come up, go high. 
when we get the rain. But after two hours, uh, it's all flushed. But the still plant is not sealed it or covered. Then every time we have, and in Fukushima area, um, so more radiation is there than last year. So this year's radiation level is higher than last year. It means plant is still emitting all radi radiation or nuclide. Okay. Okay. We don't need to go to Fukushima. We can stay right here in downtown Tokyo and get all the rads you want, courtesy of the People's Republic of China. This is uh, another problem. Uh, this uh, sand came, concrete, came from China, and uh, that was a uh, uh, mines of a uh, how's it, uranium mountain. And uh, in Japan, it was how's it, we had a short of a uh, sand when we developed too much. Then we bought the sand from China, and it was radiated. So this area is a uh, this is a called a Kizania or kids play area. And the radiation level is a four micro sievert. And uh, for nuclear response, uh, government did not uh, how say government always keep saying uh, Fukushima is safe. So even though now uh, it's not safe, and the radiation level is higher than last year, but uh, uh, government released the border, so everybody is now entering Fukushima and get the dose. And last year, we uh, checked uh, uh, the parents and the kids' dose last uh, October, and we, have, we already have a high dose last year, and the kids' level of dose is 10 times higher than the adult because of uh, maybe it's absorbed quickly, and uh, it will damage the DNA. So we try to... Uh, fix that problem, like uh, we measure the P, uh, P24, P51, and the telomere uh, to check a dose. And this is just new technology, and uh, we already have that the blood testing system. And uh, so everybody is now checking uh, the body by ourselves, but the government is still saying uh, it's safe. So we still have a risk communication problem. And uh, this is a city recovery. Uh, government have a recovery budget, but uh, it means strange. Uh, recovery means we cannot build new city. We must recover or build. The road is winded because as it was, it's very strange. So all mayor and city mayors are confusing now. So they want to build a new city. With, uh, because uh, lots of land is already damaged and also released and no ownership. But uh, in the past, we had a difficulty to make a road straight because lots of a property owner there, but uh, it's gone now. And uh, we can make a straight road, but the government is asking to please uh, make a road as, as it was. So it's very strange. And also, uh, so uh, we are now, some city mayor is building a new city without any government budget. So they are asking a private company to build the city and give a market. So some, si uh, some city will be uh, uh, successful. And uh, in terms of the international assistance, uh, Japan got uh, lots of assistance uh, proposal from outside, especially from U.S., because U.S. and Japan have a U.S.-Japan security treaties. So U.S. must uh, help if Japan got some damage, and Japan must help uh, if U.S. got any damage. So uh, we had uh, lots of proposal from other country, but most of our uh, proposal was rejected by Japanese uh, say, government. And also, uh, uh, nuclear facility is a high security facility. Then most of the foreign country people cannot enter or government don't want to enter. So, but uh, finally, uh, Japanese government accepted some international assistance later, but uh, it was too late. And uh, this is a, how's it, 
U.S.-Japan joint response. Uh, we have a Kizuna a joint task force system and center in Yokota Air Force Base. And, uh, but the Japanese government and the prime minister did not ask anything. So everybody just uh, standed by. So unfortunately, lots of people has passed away uh, by mismanagement. And also, uh, this is a security treaty, and uh, it, it was made after World War II in San Francisco. And uh, 50 years uh, already passed that history, so we, need, we may need to update. And uh, also, everybody is happy to change the as a system more effectively, we can coordinate for disaster response, not for war purpose. And uh, this is a simple uh, situation or level of stage in um, emergency. Uh, we have a prevention, preparedness, pre uh, response, and the recovery and the mitigation and the detect and the report. This is just a simple uh, system. And uh, this is a logic of Japanese uh, system, so everybody uh, feels strange. This is a disaster response and a prevention system in Japan. Uh, any disaster are prevented and guaranteed safe by Japanese government, and this is a Japanese government, a major government role. So then uh, citizens don't need to prepare because uh, if uh, any disaster happened to citizen, it's government fault. So government don't need to escape or evacuate anything. So uh, government also have an evacuation shelter, but it's not uh, uh, has armed or nothing there. So if we go to a shelter, we'll be killed because no food, no service, uh, no water. So uh, in um, last year, disaster, uh, disaster event happened and lots of uh, people was killed by this system. So Japanese government is now changing rather than prevention to response and the government don't need to guarantee any like a protection. And this is uh, another uh, politics and uh, Japanese government are not honest to citizens to give uh, information because they scared about the uh, fact and they want to control uh, information and uh, uh, definitely a prime minister knew all the information, but uh, he did not make a decision and uh, also uh, did not give information. And uh, there is a, still, we have a risk communication problem and also human rights problem. And the politics are in uh, many places and the big problem of Japanese politics and uh, maybe a prime minister or a current administration was wrong last year, but uh, it's not uh, only his fault. Uh, Japanese law or constitution was wrong. After World War II, uh, the, from constitution, emergency declaration function was cut. So we, we don't, Japan cannot declare any emergency by law. So by law means uh, with power and legal uh, power and also budget, we cannot do. Uh, because uh, Japan was a kind of an extension of the United States after World War II. Then um, the U.S. cut this emergency declaration function from Japan constitution. So we, we are now trying to amend this uh, declaration system. Maybe it takes uh, two, three years to change. So uh, what uh, Japan should... Uh, where Japan should go or what Japan should do is a uh, Japan constitution emergency declaration amendment with U.S.-Japan security treaty update. This is uh, a prime and the disaster response concept uh, transformation. Uh, like uh, Japan is maybe number one for disaster prevention, but uh, people, human, cannot protect, uh, prevent all natural hazard. So. Uh, we should think about we need to we 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 need to respond always and but uh, uh, as i explained japanese government said uh, government is perfect so citizens don't need to escape because government protection system is perfect but uh, uh, with nature or wild uh, perfect is not possible 
So we are changing a prevention to response capability built. Uh, it's too late for Tokyo City. Uh, Tokyo City has a, now a high risk for new earthquake. Uh, will it be maybe magnitude 9 or na magnitude 9.5 is expected and uh, near 100% risk and uh, in two years. And after uh, two years passed, we will have a 75% uh, risk for 30 years uh, because Tokyo cities are too much population and also uh, uh, we have uh, three layers, uh, fault line, fault line plate. So, so it's very dangerous area. And uh, also we made a research for capability of the Tokyo metropolitan city and the medical service is not enough and it's too late to prepare the uh, uh, medical services. So uh, we are, Tokyo city is now uh, how say, reducing our population too much, but uh, it's too late, but uh, as much as possible we do. So most of foreigner is not in Japan because uh, if non-Japanese speaking people are in Tokyo, uh, we will have a risk and a difficult to control. But uh, so we are limit the residents people. And also political leadership development is needed. So uh, US and Japan is now developing a, a joint leadership creation. Uh, it's too late, but uh, we, we start and maybe 10 years or 20 years later, we will have a more good leadership. And this is uh, uh, the Japan nature and the resilience system in the past. Uh, it worked before World War II, but uh, now this system does not work. Uh, Japan is at risk always, like earthquake, tsunami, typhoon, and so on. And when event, uh, event happened uh, and we cause a disaster, and we create a wisdom, and wisdom will make a prepa preparation. Then Japan will, this is a nice circle, and uh, Japan was a resilient city in the past, but uh, we still, we have uh, too much population, so we are not a good resilient system now, so we try to redo this uh, love route. And this is a simple, this is a US model, uh, response plan and uh, IMS and ICS, those are kind of our people. And we can uh, concatenate uh, horizontally and vertically, and we have a federated good system. And this is a expected uh, uh, how say, uh, current damage and uh, expected Tokyo earthquake, uh, Kobe earthquake and uh, um, the 311 earthquake last year is a completely different. Um, and Kobe was a vertical shake. And uh, last year, we had a horizontal shake. So post economy was a uh, 200 billion US dollar both. And the asset damage was a uh, 100 billion and 200 billion. And uh, East Japan is wider than the Kobe city. So we have a three, four state in uh, East Japan area. And when we get the Tokyo earthquake, maybe we will really have a, a how say, we have a post economy is a two trillion US dollar economy in Tokyo. And this is a vertical. And, uh, and the death will be a 10,000. And uh, in two weeks, we will have a, a we just calculate or simulated and uh, one, one million people will be die in two weeks because of a uh, medical service is not function. So this is an expected uh, uh, earthquake and a new damage to Japan. So uh, we try to uh, set up uh, quickly the emergency decoration function. Without the emergency decoration, in Kobe earthquake, we discuss emergency decoration is necessary, but uh, everybody forget and uh, we got the earthquake last year. So we got an another similar damage. So for Tokyo earthquake preparation, we try to do and change the constitution change or amendment. And Fukushima is still active or in a disaster. And the Fukushima plan is a 150 years program. And other area is a 30 years recovery program. So just for decontamination, it takes 150 years in Fukushima, but the people are still living there.
And uh, in a disaster situation, we have uh, lots of missing function. And uh, I have video, and you can see some missing function in a disaster response. Just a moment. This was a originally a food and a supply system. Lots of U.S. companies, uh, like a big roads, and uh, lots of companies uh, donated the product, and we delivered to this station uh, with a uh, U.S. military cargo and also NYK cargo uh, 747. And you can see this is a massage. Massage is not in a listed in a disaster product, and the shower is also not included. So we found lots of missing uh, product or services. We can say services. Also, women need uh, cosmetics, and uh, if they don't use the uh, cosmetics, they will get stressed. So we deliver the cosmetics also. And for kids, we uh, we got a big donation from toy companies. So we delivered all toys to kids. And also a school textbook and so on. And those products are not listed in a stockpile. Stockpile is just water and food. Even a power generator is not was not in that stockpile. And this team will work for another 20 years. This is the plan. Most of the uh, uh, rescue people and uh, uh, assisting people or contributors just uh, go to a uh, uh, damaged area once and they never come back and just visit one day and come back. But uh, those team is uh, continue to work for 20 years. And the government did not support them. We have uh, funding by private sector people. Also, survivors are happy to pay, like a haircut and so on. Uh, they are happy to pay, and uh, Japanese people have a cash. And we are also making a new business scheme. Uh, it's not for business purpose. It's uh, everybody is happy to pay, and uh, everybody is happy to do a service. So we say uh, this is a more a political or a social word. Uh, one thousand people's every foot, rather than one person's one thousand feet. This is a concept of this uh, team. Yeah. So this is a situation now in Japan, and a lot of bureaucratic problem is there, and uh, we try to fix, but uh, it's very difficult to fix. Uh, maybe uh, ne next week, next week we will have a new prime minister. We don't know the same guy or a different guy, but we will get a new prime minister and change all policies next week. 
and uh, we hope uh, they cover the disaster response, but uh, we are not sure yet. That is the election. Thank you very much. Thank you. Question time. We have time for just one or two questions. Tom, did you have a question? I bet you would like. So uh, again, this is Tom Popic. Um, my question, here in the United States, we have a public comment process mm -hmm. for proposed uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. In Japan, is there a public comment process? And if there isn't, uh, is that something that your organization is encouraging? Yeah, uh, we have a public comment process, but uh, uh, most of the case, it does not work, just we speak out. But uh, uh, citizen people, uh, just listening, but the citizens also don't have much capability to wh why that is and so on. And uh, when we try to change uh, any policy, it's very difficult. It's politics area. And uh, so the reason why uh, we initiated the uh, Japan Resilience Initiative, uh, government did not function. Then we called, we asked all former um, uh, defense minister on call, and they belong to uh, Japan Resilience Initiative, and we, we used uh, retired or reserved soldiers. It's, they are not uh, active, and, but they are happy to do for social uh, purpose. Thank you. That's very similar to the InfraGuard model we're, we're producing by uh, getting leaders of industry and government together to uh, work on these issues. We have another question here. Um, my name is Paula Gordon. Thank you for your presentation. And I also want to comment on um, Mr. Uh, Pop Kitts, is that the right pronunciation? Um, uh, I've been very deeply concerned uh, since working at FEMA in the early 80s uh, uh, and at Na National Science Foundation about uh, some little known research that's been done into the vulnerability of particularly US nuclear facilities which has been built according to structural engineering criteria and not taken into adequate consideration mechanical engineering criteria. Therefore, the um, uh, magnitude of earthquake that uh, uh, nuclear power plants in the United States have been built to withstand uh, is not, um, is too low. It's much too low. It's been configured too low. Because what can happen in an earthquake, according to the mechanical engineering research that, that uh, I report on in a, an article that will become available in the next few days through the Journal of Physical Security, uh, the, the, uh, what has not been taken into consideration is what can happen to rotor-bearing systems uh, in, in, in a high magnitude earthquake where they can become the centripetal centrip forces uh, and gyroscopic forces can become such that uh, they, will be, they will become um, projectiles and uh, have a ruinous effect on, on nuclear power plant facilities. Now this is, this is material that has not been well um, uh, the people have not become aware of that was originally done by the National Science Foundation way back in the 80s. What I'd like to, to uh, um, get, uh, ask you is, in your discussions with uh, people in this country concerning the implications of the Japan earthquake and tsunami for nuclear power plant safety in, in this country, what have been your um, your feelings concerning um, the aware level of awareness and the level of concern. Do you think it's, it's anywhere near what it should be? I guess you both can take a crack at that, uh, mm -hmm. or either of you. Do you? Uh, for, uh, uh, basically, for any uh, hazard or response, uh, we should focus to a response and the city, citizen safety. Uh, but uh, in Japan case, uh, nuclear is national security. So they're more focused to how to protect the plant and, uh, rather than uh, saving uh, people. And that is another problem. 
And, and I can respond uh, somewhat to your uh, observations about safety standards uh, which are structural in nature but don't necessarily apply to equipment which then could produce uh, cascading damage within a plant. So there's a similar situation with uh, U.S. nuclear plants in that they have uh, what are called GSU transformers, uh, generator step-up transformers. And uh, should they be subjected to uh, geomagnetically induced current from a solar storm, uh, they can overheat and in some cases explode and catch fire, which is a safety concern. So I, I think your general point is uh, just looking at these safety issues from one dimension, for example, a structural dimension, really isn't, doesn't encompass the, the whole range of threats. And, and I would also point out that, uh, again, the, the vendors for the uh, Japanese plants at Fukushima were essentially U.S. vendors, and so we all have a, a similar problem still. Thank you very much. And uh, we're running a little bit over time. Uh, let's give our guests from Japan a round of applause. And hopefully they can stay as late as the last hour where we'll have some more opportunity to have some give and take.